something happened to me on a dark night in 1976. It was December 19th, a day that would change my life forever. It was the day I died. You were dead for 19 minutes. When I came back, I did not come back the same. How do you feel? I did not come back alone. What seemed like days passed in 19 minutes. And over the course of the next few years, I began to remember the greatest mysteries revealed to me. I discovered a secret beyond any secret. The sum of all secrets. My eyes have seen something. You have seen nothing. It's out there and I will find it. You will find nothing. It's like Solomon's gold. It was the key to Solomon's wisdom. The secrets of the Knights Templar and of the Freemasons. You must be stopped. Courage, my dear boy. Be strong, be brave. I challenged myself to find out everything I could. I found great teachers who knew this and began to seek them out. Ask, believe, and receive. I traveled the world, and the meta secret was revealed. The time has come. I became a messenger to deliver all that was made known to me. I'm Bob Proctor. Meta is a nice word. It's a word most people don't understand. We talk about metaphysical, we'll say, oh, that's bad stuff. No, no, no. It's just what you can't see with these eyes. You gotta see with an inner eye of understanding. Meta is beyond the physical. Do you know that 99% of our population has been programmed to let the outside world control the inside? If you wanna get what you want, you let the inside world control the outside. That's what the Meta Secret's all about. The Meta Secret to wealth and abundance is doing what you love, following your passion, enjoying your life, being grateful for this moment, realizing that in fact, you already have wealth and abundance. You have wealth and abundance to the level that you allow it in your life. Expand your level of openness, deservingness, and you can have more wealth and abundance right now. How do you become more wealthy? You become more grateful. Studies here in the U.S. show that grateful people earn more money and are better at innovation. So the first step to becoming more wealthy is become more grateful. Find the good in your world right now and you'll take a first step to become more wealthy. The meta secret to wealth is knowing exactly what you want and then being willing to pay the price to get it. Most people think that wealth just comes out of having this impression in your mind that you're going to live an abundant life. And that's an important piece of it, but it's incomplete. If you look at the word attraction and the law of attraction, the last six letters spell action, A-C-T-I-O-N. One of my favorite words is satisfaction. We all want to have satisfaction. And again, in Latin, satis means enough. Enough action, satisfaction, enough action produces the result. 
You know, I've been very, very successful with the Chicken Soup for the Soul books, and everyone thinks, oh man, you were lucky, you had this great idea. And we use the law of attraction. We visualize and we put up posters around our office that simulate a bestseller list with our name number one. We visualize bookstore windows full of Chicken Soup for the Soul books, all of which came true. But there's a asking and a believing and a receiving the three steps that I think of in the law of attraction and the second part of believing is taking action because if you believe that your action is going to pay off you'll take the action so believing doesn't just mean like sitting there going mm, I believe I can be wealthy it means doing the things that produce wealth the key to abundance is to act in spite of fear act in spite of doubt Act in spite of worry. Act in spite of inconvenience. Act in spite of uncertainty. Act in spite of anything. If we're talking about metaphysical, we're talking about beyond the physical. So what we've got to do is go inside. We have been programmed to live from the outside in. We're letting what's going on outside of us control what's going on inside. If we're going to get into the meta side of our own personality, we've got to get away from this physical instrument we've got and move into the higher side of our own personality and start to understand that we live simultaneously on three planes of understanding and we work from a higher to a lower potential. If you're working with electricity, any electrician, any engineer will tell you that you have to work from a higher to lower potential. If you go contrary to that, you're not going to get any use out of the, uh, out of the electricity. Well, when you're working with the mind, you don't start with the physical and work up. You start with thought and work down. Thoughts are of a spiritual nature. Spirit's omnipresent. Where's thought? Thought's omnipresent. A hundred percent evenly present in all places at the same time. I can be underwater and think. I can be in an airplane and think. I got the pleasure of working with a couple of the astronauts that have been on the other side of the moon and they could think. Not only could they think on the other side of the moon, they could transfer their thoughts to somebody here on Earth. It's just a, a form of telepathic communication. You know, it's been said that if you build it, they will come. I think if you build it, and you build something with true excellence and you distinguish it in the marketplace and you come up with a selling proposition and you are aggressive in your marketing to the world, it's possible that people will come, but it's not inevitable that they will come. And sitting around passively visualizing things is not likely to get the world beating a path to your door. My meta secret about wealth ultimately is you've got to create a lot of value for a lot of people and if you do that you will bring a lot of wealth back to you so by giving service and giving that which helps other people improve their lives brings joy to them brings service and products to them if you do that and you keep expanding that always be thinking about expanding your service to others and if you do that wealth is a foregone conclusion First thing, quit listening to what everyone else is telling you what to do. And start paying attention to what you want to do. You see, I can look back with my memory and I can remember going and saying, Mom, Dad, or to the teacher, I want to do so and so. And they'd say, now how are you going to do that? See, what they didn't understand is I didn't know how to do it. But neither does anyone know how to do the things they want to do when they first think of it. You don't have to know how. You know, two young bicycle mechanics from Dayton, Ohio, in the United States of America, introduced us to a new kingdom. They were the first ones to fly in airplanes. The whole world believed that you couldn't do that. Anything heavier than air is attracted towards the center of the world. You can't fly. But they wanted to, and so they did. Well, clarity to me is a very different um, concept than I think a lot of people. The first thing I want to know is what do you think you're trying to accomplish? The next thing I want to know is why are you trying to accomplish it? The next thing I want to know is if you accomplish it, what do you really think is going to happen in your life? A lot of people come to me and they say, I want to grow my business because I work a lot in the business world, the entrepreneurial world. I teach a concept, achievement concept, a concept that is predicated on taking action and implementing called optimization. Optimization is getting the highest and the best 
use and result and outcome of your time, your efforts, your emotion, your life, your relationships. But you can't begin, and this is where a lot of people, I think, really fall down. You can't begin to optimize until you take the time to observe, examine, and identify not all, but the scope of options and alternatives and other possibilities available to you, number one, to achieve the goal, and number two, as an alternative goal. Clarity is power. Just by being clear, you will automatically begin to magnetize things to you, to your life. The law of mentalism is about the mind. Everything that we have ever created, everything that has ever existed, existed first in the mind. All thoughts are the beginning of all things real. All things that you can touch and feel began in the mind. So if you want to be wealthy, you've got to decide what wealth is to you. Define it. What does it mean? How much money do you have to have? For me, financial independence meant having $30 million producing income, which allows me the lifestyle I want without having to work. And so I've achieved that. But I knew exactly what I wanted because I looked at what it would cost me to live my lifestyle. Most people don't know their net worth. They don't know their income levels of what would be required to produce what they want. They say they want to own a yacht, but they don't know what a yacht costs. They don't know what it costs for the slippage fee. They don't know what it costs to maintain a yacht. So go out and create your ideal lifestyle and then figure out exactly what it would cost to live it and then set that number as the number you want to achieve. Then believe you can achieve it. Visualize it every single day. Take action when the action comes. Ask for what you want. Reject rejection. Give up any idea of failure. Just persevere until you continue on, until you produce the result you want. The law of attraction is a good starting point for thinking about how to improve your life. You want to align your thoughts and your beliefs with what you want your life to be. But the law of attraction itself, by itself, won't allow you to achieve the abundance that you need. There are certain steps that you need to take. And these steps are all incorporated in what we call the meta secret. And the meta secret isn't one solitary method or one solitary system. The meta secret is a combination of tools, methodologies, and ways to understand the world and ways to understand how we can change the world. Until I started looking at who I was and who I wanted to become, nothing changed. Because every time I would look and I would blame something else or blame somebody else or just look in a different direction that was not inside, I would get more of what I was creating. Because every time I created something, people would react to that. Every time I took an action that was blaming this or blaming that, people would react to that. And you know what? Then I would react to their reactions. And I was creating an environment that was busy instead an environment that supported wealth and abundance. If you look around, there's nothing but the abundance everywhere that you see. You see the trees growing. You see businesses happening. This is wealth. This is prosperity. This is abundance. If it's not happening for you, it's because unconsciously you have beliefs, counter intentions, negativity that actually blocks it from coming into your life. It's actually working the law of attraction all the time, but it's happening on an unconscious level. The abundance is there. The wealth is there. But if you don't feel it, if you're not expressing it, it's because inside of you, you may feel you don't deserve it. This is part of the unconscious work that has to be done in order for you to feel on a conscious, real, live, earth level level what's happening with abundance and prosperity. Abundance wealth is your natural birthright. If you're not feeling it, it's because of your unconscious beliefs. The law of correspondence simply stated is as above, so below, as within, so without. The law of correspondence is simply attesting to the fact that we are human creatures physically present, but we have minds and we have spirits. So we exist in more than just one plane. We might even be multidimensional beings with multidimensional thoughts. And there may be more to you than just meets the eye. 
If you want to be wealthy on the outside, you first have to become wealthy on the inside. As above, so below. As within, so without. First you have to become wealthy in your thoughts. Then you become wealthy in your outer expression of that. You have to have a wealthy attitude. You have to have a wealthy, abundant thought form about who you are and what's possible. And when you have that, it will start to manifest outside of you. If a person wants to take a quantum leap rather than incremental steps, they have to begin by understanding that they can do that. There's a marvelous little book. It's called You Square. Now think of what that means. If you square a number, you multiply the number by the number, don't you? Well, when you square, you multiply your potential by your potential. It's astronomical. I mean, you just go off the board. The man that wrote the book, Price Pritchett, he said, when you're looking at a quantum leap, he says it looks ridiculous, utterly. But in retrospect, it looks like a natural thing to happen. It was without effort, it's with ease. And that's what quantum leaps are. What you're really doing is getting rid of limitations in your mind and you're letting your mind just take off and build a great big idea. And you start before you're ready. You defy what the masses are controlled by. You've got to move into a space all of your own. Understand you're working with an infinite power that's omnipresent. It's with you all the time. It's closer than your breath. And you get in harmony with that and just release all thoughts of limitation and make up your mind you're going to take and just compound your effectiveness. That's essentially what I did. I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I didn't understand quantum leap, but I took my income from 4,000 a year to 175,000 in a year. And then it went over a million. And I had no understanding of what happened. Now understand this. I had been raised to believe that if you don't have a good formal education, that you'd never be able to do what I did. If you don't have experience, you can never do what I did. I had two months high school and I had a bad work record. But my income went from 4,000 to over a million a year. Now you can do that. And the first step is understanding that you can do it. Quit listening to people tell you you can't. And start to see yourself doing something really big. Write it out on a sheet of paper. Begin by saying, I am so happy and grateful now that I have turned my annual income to a monthly income. It's not just about attracting things to you. It's about learning to trust what you're attracted to. You are naturally going to be attracted to certain kinds of people, to certain movies over other movies, to places you want to vacation versus other places, to uh, workshops you want to take or books you want to read versus other books. Trust what you're attracted to. It will take you where you need to go, and it may not always make sense to you. I remember going to a seminar and there was a, a, a woman teaching about how to triple your income in a year. And at that time, I was probably more like a hippie than I am the entrepreneur that I am today. And my wife, who was against making money at the time, thought it was evil and you should be in total service and all this. She said, I can't believe you're going to that workshop where they're going to teach you about how to make all this money. I thought you were more spiritual than that. I said, honey, I don't know why I'm attracted to that workshop. I'm going to go there. So I sat down. The woman next to me, we started talking. It turns out she was a veterinarian. And it turns out that our cat had feline leukemia at the time. And I started talking to her about that. And she said, well, I'm the world's expert on feline leukemia. And I said, well, I've heard there's no cure for that. She said, no, there actually is a cure. And I can teach it to you. And so she called my veterinarian, told him what to do. My cat lived for many, many more years than the local vet thought it should. But see, I was trusting my attraction to go to that seminar, and it led me in a path that saved my cat's life, which was not where my conscious thinking was, but it was a very important goal to me to keep my cat alive. Those kind of things will start to happen. Most people are uncertain about something. They're uncertain about their next step. Here's your message. Do it. Do it. Whatever you're uncertain about, do it. Take the step. 
you will learn so much more. You will get so much further faster by actually getting in the game than doing it, than thinking about it forever. One of my sayings is, one step in the right direction is worth a hundred years of thinking about it. The law of correspondence, the law of mentalism, and the law of vibration all combine to help you understand that the notion of wealth is arbitrary. You're always wealthy in comparison to someone else. You choose a person to compare yourself with, or your wealth or your level of wealth with, and then you decide at that point to be happy with the situation or to be unhappy and therefore change it. All of wealth is subjective. Understand this and you understand that there's an ebb and a flow to your finances. The more comfortable you are with how you interact with the world, with the value you give in the world, with the service or the product that you give the world, then you begin to realize your place in the world. And by realizing this, you participate in the abundance that is all around you at every moment and at every time. It is all yours. From the beginning, it was yours. Until the end, it will always be yours. The secret to relationships is to know that the universe is giving you love right now. When you give love to the universe, when you give love to another, you will receive love in turn. Love is the essence and nature of relationship. Relationships are a two-way street. It's not just about taking and giving and receiving and getting what you want, but it's also about giving. I like to say that each person should take 100% responsibility for the quality of the relationship. Because if you take 50-50, whenever it's not working, it's gonna be their 50%. So if you take 100% and act as if everything in the relationship, you're creating it, and when it isn't exactly what you want it to be, say, hmm, how am I creating that? Take that curiosity and use it as a tool. And when you get the answer like, oh, I, I'm not coming home on time, I'm not listening, I'm not doing this, then you have the opportunity to shift and do the thing that produces relationship. A friend of mine wrote a book called Making Relationships Work. And the idea is there is work in making the relationship work. So be willing to do the work. Give as much as you get. The more you give, the more will come back. To have a better relationship, with anyone in your life. First, you begin by having a relationship with yourself. Treat yourself the way you would your very dearest friend. Love yourself regardless of all the crazy shenanigans you pull. Believe me, I do this every day. So if you want a better relationship with someone else, love yourself. Relationships are part of what the universe is giving you as a gift. The first and most important relationship is the one with yourself. When you love yourself, you heal yourself. When you love yourself, you become a magnet that people want to hang around and you begin to attract other people and new relationships. It's all based on love. It's all based on non-judgment. It's all based on total acceptance. The universe has a relationship with you right now and the universe wants to give you more. Are you ready to accept it? The concept that I can't live without you is a tragic statement to me. The idea that I need somebody else to complete my life, I need somebody else or my life's not worthwhile is a, is a very sad statement and I think someone needs to take a good look at themselves when they, when they say that. When you start to think that thought, stop for a second realize life is full of stuff and sometimes stuff is potholes and sometimes stuff is bridges are out ahead and sometimes there's a detour in life I heard somebody once say that sometimes the most beautiful scenes in life are the ones we observe on a detour have you ever gone on a detour and realized that your life wouldn't have been the same if you hadn't taken that twist or that turn in your life next time stuff happens Take a look. Maybe there's something better right around the corner.
The law of cause and effect tells us that there are no such thing as coincidences. Everything that happens in this world happens because of a reason. Someone, somewhere, created a cause. It may not be something you are aware of. It may not be something we can even begin to realize or see at this level. But at some level, someone, somewhere, or a group of people, or even us, may have created it. And so as a result, we see the effect. We see the effect around us. We see the effect everywhere on this planet. Everyone asks me, Jay, how in the world can I have a better, a happier, a richer, a more joyous relationship? And it's very simple. First thing is you got to slow down enough to be externally focused. It's all about them. The more interested and externally focused you are on the other person, the more extraordinary their experience will be and the more naturally they'll reciprocate it. The second, and you're watching me and I've got a serious side and you know that, but you gotta get in touch with your childlike sense of curiosity, of innocence. The third is you gotta be in the here and now and that's so trite and said so often, but being in the here and now means connecting deeply and being aware of what people are saying and looking at them and, and being responsive to their feedback and their mannerisms. And the last thing and the easy thing is to, again, as I said earlier, enjoy the process. We are so busy, so stressed in our life, trying to get from one thing to another, trying to multitask, that the greatest way to have wonderful relationships is to commit, commit, not just the time, but your being to being there, to connecting. For me, the meta secret to relationships is to be the person you're looking for. Whatever it is you're out there looking for, be that and give it away. If you're looking for someone who's loving and kind and compassionate and generous, you need to be loving, kind and compassionate and generous. Whatever it is you want, you've got to be that and express that out into the universe. And whatever you express out is going to come back multiplied. The meta secret of relationships is for you to develop an identity that brings out the best in your partner and helping your partner to be the best that they can in order to bring out the best of who you are. Criticism seems to be a big problem. If you are really secure in yourself and somebody criticizes you, um, it isn't going to bother you. Now, if you're insecure and somebody criticizes you, it's really going to bother you. You see, nine out of ten times, the person that's criticizing you really wants to help you. They just haven't really learned how to communicate effectively. But let's not let somebody else's criticism or their way of helping us shake us. If we're solid in our own self, and we really understand ourselves, then we can handle it and it won't be any problem. If criticism really rattles your chain or rattles your cage or really upsets you, it's not the criticism that upsets you. It's not the other person's opinion that upsets you. It's how you react to it. And you see, if you are really solid within yourself, you would respond to it. You would thank them for it and say, but I really don't choose to do that. Or you'd say, well, thank you. That's probably a good idea. I'll try it. But they're not going to knock you off track. So it goes back to have a good sound self-image, a good image of yourself. Maxwell Maltz wrote a beautiful book on that way back around 1960 called Psycho-Cybernetics. Psyche-Cybernetics. Cybernetic is the communication mechanism in our mind. It's the image that we hold of ourselves. It's like a life-governing device. Well, you've got an image of you just same as I have an image of me. And our image controls how we walk, how we talk, how we dress, how we meet and greet people, and it also controls how we handle criticism when it comes our way, and it will come your way, just same as it comes to me and everybody. We want to be solid in our own belief about who we are and what we are. Let's really get to know ourselves, and then rather than react, let's respond. It doesn't matter how they approach, whether they're diplomatic and trying to help us or whether they're trying to find fault, it won't really make any difference. We will listen to what they have to say, listen to it, and then we'll either accept it or reject it, but it isn't going to affect the relationship with the other person one bit.
There is masculine and feminine in everything. Nothing is entirely masculine, nor is it entirely feminine. We have different aspects of yin and yang, of harshness and softness, different aspects of masculinity and femininity in everything. If you take a look at life and see it all as a combination, see how we are always living in combination, then you begin to realize and to also appreciate the law of gender. Relationships are about communion, taking our life and making it sacred through connection with another human being. So communion and making sacred is what relationship is all about. You know, there's a lot of lonely people around. And if you're lonely, I'm going to let you in on a secret. You're always going to be lonely until you become friends with yourself. If you're looking for company outside of yourself, you're looking in the wrong place. You want to go inside. And when you get to really look at you, you're going to feel so good about you. You're going to love yourself. As you see, as a little kid, you were probably taught, don't love yourself, that's conceit. I know I was, and most of the people I know. That's not conceit. That's a healthy, conscious awareness of who we really are. I'm not talking about an ego trip. I'm talking about really becoming acquainted with yourself. You've got to build a good relationship with you, or you're always going to be lonely. When you get angry, look at it as, OK, this is a gift. I need to release something here. And in that process, relationship becomes a school for growth instead of just like it's someone that's going to please me. Look at how can I serve them and how can I learn from them as opposed to how can I manipulate them to give me all my needs met. If you do that, you're going to end up with a much better relationship. If you're in a relationship where you're not experiencing full love, the way to change it is not by changing the other person. It's by changing yourself. You look within yourself and you start to feel grateful for everything about you. As you change your relationship with yourself, magically, the outside relationship will change as well. You will suddenly see it transformed. You will suddenly see that there's love in that relationship with that other person. But you don't change the other person. You change you. spend valuable time in their life focusing on the past. I, um, I could probably spoil your week if I reviewed the first 26 years of my life. My life was a mess. And you know, at the end of 26 years, imagine living for 26 years and looking at yourself, your unhappy second book. I had a guy look at me and he told me I was one of the most miserable people he had ever met. And he was right. Um, I was plain miserable. He said, you're always sick. I didn't have a terminal illness or anything, but I was always backache, headache or something. And I was always broke. He said, why don't you change it? Well, as long as I kept focusing on what led me to this point, which was a bad trip, I was going to create more of the same. And he said, let it go. Forgive it. If you're looking for love and not finding it, it's no doubt because of a lack of forgiveness in some area of your life. This is true for all of us. You want to look in your life, look at your past, look at all of your relationships, and ask yourself, where have I not forgiven? Myself, my parents, my siblings, my neighbors, my relatives, my business partners, where have I not forgiven? When you go and forgive, you release the energy that allows the law of attraction to bring new love and new relationships into your life. How do you do this? You look and ask yourself, where have I not forgiven somebody? Somebody's gonna come to mind. It could be you. The second thing you do is say, can I forgive them? Can I forgive myself? Whether you say yes or no, you move to the third part of this and you start to wonder what made that person act the way they did at that point? What made me act the way I did at that one point? And you start to go deep into understanding the psychology of behavior 
and you realize we're all doing the best we can, yourself included. At that point, when you can forgive yourself and you can forgive these other people, whoever it might be, for whatever may have occurred, when you forgive them, you release all of the energy that's been stuck psychically within your own mind and your body and your soul. And when that releases into the universe, the universe now has an open pathway to return to you new love, new relationships, new blessings. It all begins with forgiveness. And you can do that right now. When we talk about love, we're talking about the greatest word in the world. Leadership is a great word, but no word compares with love because without love, you're dead. There's life in love. There's forgiveness in love. There's really everything. There's thankfulness in love. Now, the problem is learning where do we start? Because we find sometimes in families, there's no love. In marriages, there's no love. But we quit looking around and we start learning. It begins with me. And when we start learning, we're not too loving ourselves. And it begins with your learning. To me, you could say you're loving, but unfortunately, you love people you like. Love has to be unconditional. Loving those you don't like. Now, in my case, when my wife married me, she said she loved me. I told her I loved her. But as soon as we got married, I would say, I love you. She said, well, why don't you act like it? I say, I do act like it. She said, you have a funny way of showing it. I say, well, I love you enough to die for you. She says, try living a little. And so I discovered, as loving as I was, I didn't fit her definition. The law of gender, the law of vibration, and the law of rhythm. All of these figure in relationships. You see, love is a dynamic. Any relationship is a dynamic. When you are actively relating, that's when it's alive. That's when it's fun. When you set back and you start to look at the relationship, then it becomes static. It becomes a relationship to be assessed, to be looked at. But when you're relating to your partner or your spouse, amazing things happen. It's dynamic. It's moving. It's alive. And that's what all love is supposed to be, alive and so much more fun. Changes happen all the time. We change. Human beings change. You change, I change, we all change. But if you can change together in the same direction, amazing miracles take place. Words, feelings, thoughts are all aligned. And all of a sudden, you can take on any problem and it's not an issue. That's what relationships are all about. That's what relating is all about. That's what love is all about. あ、自分に言葉を聞くなし。え、クリエイターなるものは、はい、言葉振動を用いて、そして、え、その、共鳴、え、
あるというふうに思いますね。えー、その本来の設計というものが、えー、バランスの取れたあ振動の組み合わせというものが、えー、何らかの要因によって崩れていくときに私たちはストレスを持ち病気になっているんだというふうに考えています。As you've already seen from Dr. Masaru Emoto, Water makes up 85% of our body, and the thoughts we think actually create a vibration in the, in the water that has memory. And so you have to think positive thoughts. Again, we go back to forgiveness and letting go, thinking positive thoughts, expecting to be healthy, not listening to what people tell you, not taking in beliefs. I have been out in the sun my whole life. I've never gotten skin cancer, don't intend to get skin cancer. And when stuff comes on about it, I Choose not to listen to it because I know that belief would affect me. So I believe that I am a person that my spiritual connection keeps me healthy. Also, though, I work on the level of the, the physiology of the body, the biochemistry. It makes sense to play at that level. I eat organic food. I drink healthy water that's not contaminated with chlorine and all the stuff they put in it. So I filter my water. I eat. The right kinds of nutrients for my body. I found out what I'm allergic to and I've basically eliminated those from my diet. I exercise. So, exercise and keeping my body toned. We want to have resistance exercise. We want endurance, which means we need to jog and do aerobics and things like that. And we need to have flexibility, things like yoga and Pilates. So, we need a complete system to keep our body healthy. And then, the detoxification, I think, is the part that most people don't do enough with. We are taking in so many toxins. Toxins in the air we breathe. But if you will cleanse on a regular basis, I cleanse every Monday. I just do a cleansing diet where I just drink liquids and then I don't eat anything else, and my liver has a chance to get rid of all the toxins that are in my body. I want you to understand that you have a marvelous mind and you can do anything with it, and don't ever listen to anybody that tells you you can't. You want to start to look at yourself. Not as a body or as a name. Like, I'm not Bob Proctor. Bob and Proctor are just two words. You've never heard anybody phone into school and say, Body's not coming today, it's sick. Never hear anyone say, Am hand, it's my hand, my body, my name. Well, you see, there's something wonderful about you and something wonderful about me, and it's the same thing. We have a marvelous mind, we're creative beings. Talk to your body. You're not a body, you live in a body. Now, this may sound silly because maybe nobody's ever said this to you before, but go around just repeating maybe a thousand times to yourself I'm not a body, I live in a body. I'm not a body, I live in a body. I'm not a body, I live in a body. Then start telling your body to relax. The meta secret to great health is to feel good now. You do that with good thoughts, you do that with good food, you do that with plenty of sleep, you do that by doing what you love. That's the meta secret to great health. The meta secret to health is to honor your body. Listen to your body. Are you tired? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Do you need time to play? Have greater health. Honor your body. Health. Not just physical health, not just eating the right things and getting exercise. But let's talk about emotional health. This means doing what you love, loving what you do, looking forward each day, researching, helping other people, giving back. This is the meta secret to emotional health. To me, recognizing the divine component in us has a twofold effect. On the one hand, it's incredibly humbling. Because how many of us really live up to being godly? How many of us really, really maximize the God given talents that we're given? How many of us really live lives of fulfilled potential? So, on the one hand, it's kind of intimidating, but on the other hand, it's very inspiring. It's inspiring to think I, as a human being, am capable. Of being godly. I'm not God, I'm not going to confuse myself with God, but I am capable of being godly. I am capable of a goodness which can resound around the world. I am capable, like God, of using language to bring things into existence. 
An architectural drawing is the languaging of a building into existence. A marriage contract is the languaging of a relationship into existence. Any sort of contract does that. A novel creates a world that may be more real to us than the so-called real world that we are living in. And being godly is both an obligation, which frankly I feel I fall vastly short of, but also an incredibly inspiring opportunity. And the ancient traditions, not only the one that I come from, but really all of them, teach us this. The law of rhythm is the very fabric of life itself. Rhythm is everywhere. Things are born and things die. We move into a season and we move out of a season. We go within and we go without. We change. Rhythms flow in our emotions as well. You cannot always be feeling happy. Sometimes you'll feel sad, you'll feel down, and then you'll come out of it. Whatever goes up must come down. You've heard the language. Rhythm is exactly that. And the minute you begin to realize that all of life is all about the law of rhythm, then you can flow easily in bad times and then have more fun in happy times. When you start to expect rhythms, know that if you are happy in one direction, you can also be unhappy in the other direction. The law of rhythm surrounds us, works with us, and if you master it, there's nothing you can't do. The meta secret to health and having amazing energy is the ability to look at your world from a perspective that hey, things aren't always going to go your way. But you know what? As long as you always do your best, as long as you are focused on what you achieve and what you're trying to accomplish, then it's all going to work out. I think one of the most important keys is to recognize in life just about all the limitations that we have or self-imposed. To realize that is the greatest breakout, the greatest I talk about staging jailbreaks in your life, breaking out of the mental prisons, getting over the walls of the self-imposed impossibilities in life. And it is remarkable what happens when you realize, take a look at what really is holding you back. And very often, almost all the time, it's you. It's you. The power lies within you. See, humor is good. It really is. I don't really understand what it does to you, but I know it does something to your brain. Norman Cousins, who's gone now, but lived a long and very, very effective life. And he had been diagnosed with a disease, and it was killing him. He was literally dying. And one day he got thinking to himself, if sadness and sickness are hooked together, then happiness and health must be hooked together. And so he had people bring in old movie films of Laurel and Hardy and all kinds of different old, old actors, funny, funny stories. And he started to play them. They made him move out of the hospital. So he rented a suite of rooms in a hotel. And he had these movies playing all the time. And he was laughing, a real belly laugh. And he got better. Now, I think you know when you're laughing, you're feeling good. Start to laugh at yourself. When you make a mistake, laugh at yourself. Don't get serious with yourself. It plays a very, very important role in a healthy, relaxed life. If you want to study it further, get into some of Norman Cousins' material, and he'll explain exactly what it does to the brain that controls the vibration of the body. Start laughing a little more. Have fun. The mind can't be all it is designed to be without the body being everything it was designed to be. But we basically thwart both. Or you can have a great relationship. You can have a great financial situation. You can have a great family relationship. And the big problem in our society, certainly in Western society, 
People don't exercise, 92% of the people don't exercise, they don't eat, they don't eat nutritious things, they don't take, they don't complement against, to compensate. It's, just, it's, it's very simple, and if you break it down to the little steps like the ele eating an elephant, you'll have the most rich, satisfying, uh, fulfilling, gratifying, liberating life, but you gotta balance it. right now. I don't have a voice. I don't have a sight. I don't have a hearing. My strength is going. However, I have never been more excited and thankful in my whole life. The law of vibration simply states that everything is in motion. Nothing stays static. At some level, even though something may appear as if it's not moving, its molecules are moving, its atoms are moving. Everything vibrates, not just your thoughts, everything. Now I do understand that disease cannot stay in a healthy vibration. It just cannot. I also understand you cannot turn disease into health, but you can release disease and recreate health. You see, your body is changing at the rate of millions of cells every second. And it's the thought patterns that you hold in your mind that control the vibratory rate of the body. Your brain is an electronic switching station. There's all kinds of material written on thought, on attitude, and on health. And I do know this. If you are suffering from a physical disease, quit talking about it, quit thinking about it. Go to a very competent medical doctor and follow that person's advice because he or she will tell you what to do physically, but at the same time, instantly begin visualizing every molecule of your being in a harmony with the law of vibration. Now, I would have an affirmation that I would repeat. I am so happy and grateful now that every molecule of my being is vibrating in perfect harmony with God's laws. My body is getting healthier and stronger and more vibrant every minute of every day. And repeat that. Treat it like a mantra. I can't predict what's going to happen for you personally, but I do know that hundreds of people, if not thousands of people, have experienced healings and cures by beginning to change their thoughts about what's going on in their body. In my book, The Attractor Factor, I talk about a person who had cancer. She experienced the idea of forgiving everybody and everything in her life, and she went through the process of doing that, working with a coach. She then went back into the doctor's office, they opened her for surgery, and there was no cancer. It was gone. By forgiving everybody in her life, including herself, she transformed her body. She reached this place of healing and this place of peace. And as a result, she experienced a cure. If you're finding yourself sitting here watching this and you're ill, you've got a chronic condition, you're sick, what you need to do is a couple of things. Number one, you need to first work on your attitude. You need to believe you can get healthy. You need to not believe anyone who tells you you're gonna die or it's terminal or it's gonna take a long time. Literally, we know that we can get rid of a disease in minutes, in literally minutes. I had a cold once and a person literally did an exercise with me. My nose dried up, my fever went away, the achiness went away in five minutes. So we know the power of the mind. We know that you have to forgive and release. So much work now being done on cancer where we know there's resentment and different forms of resentment will come into different forms of cancer in the body. So it's critical to get yourself aligned with spirit. When you are aligned with spirit through meditation, through doing the things that bring you joy, through doing the things that align you, and you know what that is for you. It could be singing, it could be walking in nature, it could be petting your cat. When you move into that state, healing naturally takes place through you. There's this innate, natural healing ability that's always working to heal you if you get you out of the way. By you, I mean your ego mind, your beliefs, your fears, your doubts, all of that stuff, all of the resentments you've held that you haven't released, that will keep you sick. So you've got to do some kind of work to get into a spiritual alignment and to release the negativity. 
Emotional pain is very real. It's like sorrow, uh, grief. Like grief comes in waves. It just sort of overcomes you and then it sort of fades away. You could have experienced some traumatic situation, uh, anything from rape to the loss of a loved one or being held up, uh, where somebody invaded your privacy in, a, in, a, in, a, in some way or another. And, and, it, and it causes deep emotional pain. What we want to realize is that we are bringing that on ourselves. You say, well, wait a minute, you're not bringing it on yourself. No, but you're reliving the situation. We've got to separate ourselves from the incident, from the situation. We've got to realize that it's a very real part of life and attempt to separate ourselves from it and deal with it as best we can and then let it go. Otherwise, we're going to carry it with us and we're going to keep experiencing it over and over and over again. どうやってわかるか、まあ、振動というま,まずそもそもその水の結晶とは何かということになりますけどね、えー、結晶というのはあやはり情報だと思いますで情報というのはバイブレーションですねでバイブレーションのデザイン家が雪の結晶あるいは水の氷結結晶という形になって現れてきていると思いますがえー、やはりその我々が何で、えー、美しいとか醜いだとかそ,のそういうような認識能力があるのかあるいはそれだけには全人類本当に、えー、一緒の価値観を持っていると思いますが、えー、それはもうやはりクリエイターがそのように設計されて、えー、いるからだと思うんですね。それれが崩れちゃったらももううこれはもう本当にどどしようもないんだけどあのその美臭というのが我々の美しさごめんなさい、えー、バイブレーションの健全さということにつながっていると思います水は神が自分の意識あるいは意図をまんべんなくこの宇宙に伝えるためのキャリアとして作られたものだと思いますねですから水が別の言葉で言うならば神の自身のメッセンジャーということになると思いますねそれの形が大げさで言えば結晶という形で表されているとで神にとってふさわしくないなと思うような現象については水はやはり結晶的にノー良いものはイエスという判断を示すというふうになっていると思うのでそれがなぜできるのかというのことだというとこれはまたまたまた,またうん僕にとってはまあ来世の<笑>研究課題かもしれません。ストレスは、これは、私の考えは、私たちの力を与えられるというのは、私たちの力を与えられるというのは、私たちの力を与えられるというのは、私たちの力を与えられるというのは、私たちの力を与えられるというのは、私たちの力を与えられるというのは、The condition, the circumstance, or the challenge that I may be facing, control me. You can make a decision right now that you are going to maintain your power and you're going to let everything outside stay outside, and you know that when you're in a totally relaxed state, the solution to problems c o m e Quit getting involved in these sophisticated stress management deals. Release the stress, let it go. You're in charge of your body. Just say, peace, be still. Visualize a beautiful lavender energy flowing right into the crown of your head and circulating right through your body. And then start to imagine every molecule of your body vibrating in perfect harmony with God's laws. You're totally relaxed. You're in charge of yourself. There is no stress where there's relaxation. Be calm, peace, be still. Don't even use that word anymore. Get rid of it. Release it. The laws of cause and effect, of rhythm and polarity, come into play when we talk about your health. Your body is an amazing symphony. Amazing miracles taking place on every part of your body. And what holds it together are fields of force that we, have, we cannot even begin to understand. 
Every day, your cells are renewing until you have new organs generated all the time. Your body and your cells are repairing themselves even as they remove toxins from your body. I can't help to wonder sometimes if you gave that entire symphony a wonderful environment filled with fields of happiness and radiant joy and vitality, how that growing, renewing process might work a little bit better, sort of like happy children in a playground. Here's the paradox of being human. Real happiness is only available in the moment. If you're brooding on the past or obsessed about the future, even if you're looking forward to something that could be magnificent in the future, it's not quite the same sort of anchored contentment that you get from really being in the moment. We human beings seem to be perpetually someplace else. That's, that's kind of like one definition of the human predicament, the human condition. We are perpetually thinking about the past, the future, something to the right, something to the left, something else. I think the paradox to happiness is you do have to have dreams and aspirations, and you have to be anchored, rooted, and happy where you are. Not always easy to do, but I keep trying. Happiness is a point of view. Am I happy? Yeah, I think I am. How can somebody always be sad? Of course we're sad when we lose somebody that we love or, or that when the project we're working on so long doesn't work out. We, temporary sadness is a very human condition. How can you be happy? Maybe by finding things to do that make you happy. You see, if you're miserable, your mind is focused on the past. There's a meta concept. Get you over any miserable concept in a heartbeat. Focus on right now. See, you're miserable because of something that happened that you didn't want to happen or something she said or he said or they did. Forget it. It's in the past. And quit worrying about the future. Have you any idea the number of electrical charges must fly through your body for the simple object of writing your name? See, your brain is an electronic switching station and you've got one. And you can activate brain cells and you can set up any vibration you want. If it's a negative vibration, you're going to be unhappy. If it's a positive one, you're going to be happy. Every brain cell is a positive and a negative pole. Everything that you look at is going to be impregnated into cells in your brain. Now, you're either going to look at the positive or the negative side of it. What side do you want to live in? I choose to look at the good side of a situation. Put yourself in a good vibration. Think of the blood in your body. Do you know it circulates through hundreds of miles of passageway every 33 seconds. It carries all the food in and all the garbage out. You've got more power in your little finger than you need to light up your home for the year. There's about 11 million kilowatt hours per pound of potential energy locked up in your body. And you're probably saying, I haven't got any energy. That's because you're miserable. Get out of it. Get over it. Focus on now. One of the most important things you need to do in your life is discover your life purpose. I believe that everybody is born with an individual and unique purpose. And when you are doing your life purpose, when you're living it, expressing it, fulfilling it, you're happy. And so many people have talked about joy being your guidance system, that when you're off purpose, you're not happy, you're not joyful. And so this joy, this inner experience of happiness and joy is a way of saying, oh, I'm on course, I'm doing the things I'm supposed to do. Stephen Covey said, you know, you don't want to get to the end of life and get to the top of the ladder and find out the ladder was leaning against the wrong building. You can be very, very successful. We see people with all the cars and the toys and the money and the society recognition and so forth, but they're not happy because they're not fulfilling their purpose. Think about it like this. A rose has to be a rose. A chrysanthemum has to be a chrysanthemum. A geranium has to be a geranium. And yet we as people have been given choice 
the choice to pursue any number of things and do whatever we want to do. But unfortunately, most of us have been talked out of our purpose. If you want to be happy, come back into this moment and do what you love in this moment. You should absolutely work toward improving your life, improving the world, improving your relationships, improving your finances. Every sort of conceivable improvement at a micro or macro level should indeed be your agenda. But if you are not happy with things the way they are, then your happiness is perpetually on hold pending a condition that doesn't exist yet. If you do that, you will never be happy. You have to realize that the point of power in your life is in this moment. People think about the future and they throw their power into the future. There is no future. When it gets here, it's called now. It's called this moment. People think about the past and they throw their power into the past. But there is no past. It's gone. When you think about the past, you think about it in this moment. This moment is all there is. And you can be happy in this moment. When you are, everything is taken care of. All is well. Happiness and achieving happiness is a process. It's not something you achieve right now and you're done and you have your happiness. It's something that you're constantly attaining and reattaining through life. And the way to do that is to really understand what brings contentment in your life and to achieve that. And one of the key things to remember in terms of happiness is that part of this process is sharing happiness with other people. The more we share happiness and the more we teach other people how to bring happiness and fulfillment in their life, the more we'll be happy and fulfilled. So continue with your journey of greater fulfillment and you'll have more happiness in your life. The law of polarity is about dualism. Everything exists in relation to something else. There is no person that's entirely good. There is no person that's entirely bad. There is no entirely hot or entirely cold. It's always hot in relation to something else that's colder. It's always colder in relation to something else that is hotter. We move in directions as opposed to moving in a static field. We always move from one place to another, from one thing that's more pleasant to something that's less pleasant or something that's unpleasant to something that's more pleasant. There is a movement and it, this movement exists because of polarity. Happiness is what you want and happiness you can have right now. Why aren't you feeling happy? Why isn't anybody feeling happy? Because psychologically they use unhappiness as a motivator. They think by being unhappy, angry, desperate, frustrated, whatever the feeling might be that's not happiness, that it will whip them forward. It'll make them take action. And it's something that actually shoots themselves in the foot. Because when you are happy now, which is available to you right now, you know what your choices are. You can see what your decisions are to be, and you can more clearly decide on what to do next. It comes into really understanding something about ourselves. We should start at a very early age, and we should ask ourselves, who am I? You know, you know, what really makes me tick? And get to know ourselves. We're, we're in a hurry to get a car, or build a business, or buy a house. We should introduce ourselves to ourselves. School hasn't done it. Our parents aren't doing it. You go to work for somebody, they're not going to do it. So if you don't do it for yourself, you're not going to do it. This deals between you and yourself. Pogo said, we have seen the enemy, they are us. Whatever has happened in your life, whatever is going on for you, if it's not the way you want it, any situation, consider the fact that everything happens for a reason and that reason is there to serve you. How can you reframe this? How can you relook at this in such a way that helps you, that supports you, that puts you on the path to success and positivity again? It doesn't help you to be negative. It doesn't help you to wallow. All that can do is bring you down. 
It's time to change your mind. It's time to reframe, relook at it, have a new perspective, a new view, and put this in the light of this was there to serve you. There's no accidents in the universe. This happened for a reason, and that reason is there to help you. We grow up with the idea rich people aren't happy. Well, I know rich people that are laughing. They're very happy. And of course, I know people that are very wealthy and are very unhappy. I remember old Nightingale one time saying, since it doesn't make any difference whether you're rich or not, if you're happy or not, you might as well be wealthy. And then if you're miserable, you can at least be miserable in comfort. We've got to understand that all the money in the world is available to us, but we have to earn it. Now that does not mean we should work. This is where the meta secret really comes into play. Working happens to be the very worst way to earn money. We should work for satisfaction. People should go to work at what they love doing. When we think of work, what we're really talking about is how we spend our days. Work has a, probably a bad energy attached to it. We should spend our days doing what we absolutely love to do. When it comes to the fear of failure, you look at your life and you ask, if I pursue my dream, my passion, my love, and it doesn't work out, will I still be okay? Can I still love myself? Will life still go on? When you realize that the answer is yes, you remove the fear of failure. When you remove the fear of failure, you have energy to go forward and actually make it a success. Well, what about the fear of success? When you are successful, you can make a difference in the world. If you really want the world to be a happy, prosperous place, contribute a happy, prosperous person to it. You. The meta secret to happiness is that there is perfection in imperfection. That when we accept our environment for what it is and the people around us for who they are, we can make a big difference. Happiness. What makes you happy? Everyone is not the same. For me, it's research. I love researching and writing and putting multimedia programs together. And this allows me to do something else that I love, traveling the world. I travel more than 6,000 miles, that's 9,000 kilometers, every week. I've been to more than 52 countries. I board an airplane every two and a half days. I've been around the world more than 16 times in just a couple of years. I enjoy that, meeting new people, meeting new audiences, helping people, what makes you happy? That's what makes me happy. A key component to lift yourself out of depression is human connection. Go connect with another human being. Another powerful tool is movement. And a third is laughter. Go play and have some fun and watch your spirits begin to lift. The meta secret of life is to realize that the journey is the thing. I believe the first thing a person should do is establish a purpose. Why are you even here? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? Why are you living? I honestly believe every one of us are hardwired to do something. So how do you decide on your purpose? You decide on it by asking yourself, what do I really love doing? So you have your purpose. This is what you're going to do with the rest of your life. And then you build a vision. Then your goal is taking a bite out of that vision. Now, when you do that properly, you're going to love what you do. When you wake up in the morning, you can't wait to get going. And you're going to be doing it until you go to bed at night. Therefore, all of your day, all of your hours are filled doing with what you love to do. That's called living. Everything else is dying. See, there's a basic law of life. It says create or disintegrate. You're growing or dying. Find out what you love. Dedicate your life to it. Most of us 
when we approach happiness, are looking for someone out there to make us happy, some event to occur, and then we'll be happy. If I get to the retirement stage, if I get my car, if my wife is nice to me, if my son comes home on time, then I'll be happy. The truth is, happiness is an inside job. It's a choice. When I have an expectation on how someone else should be, I've given my power over to them. What I want to do is simply learn how to create joy and happiness inside myself. And we can do that in numerous ways, by doing the things we love, by focusing on the good qualities in ourselves, by choosing to focus on the good qualities in others instead of being judgmental. Once we realize that happiness is an inside job, and I get to be as happy as I choose to be, not as happy as other people make me, the reality is I can move into a state of pretty much constant joy and bliss. Stuff happens. Life happens. And then you get to choose. Look, you have a mission to do. You have to find meaning in your life and you have to share it with others. There's a whole world out there that is suffering, that is in survival. They are grieving and they are hurting. You and I can make a difference. You begin right now by looking at your life, no matter what's going on in your life right now, and you find the good in it, the positive in it, the growth-oriented reasons for whatever it happens to be. You find the good in it, and whatever is happening, you turn it into something positive. You turn it into something good, and you go and share it with the world. You will become an inspiration to others. People model other people's behavior, and that's how the world changes. You be that inspiration for success. You be the model for change. You be that person that has meaning in their life, and you will give meaning to yourself and others. It all begins with you. You have always had, you have at this moment, and you will always have in the future, the power to achieve, to accomplish, to to have anything and everything you want in the terms of monetary wealth, prosperity, in terms of health, in terms of happiness, relationships. However, it will never ever occur until and unless and until after you first are clear on the specific goals. Number two, you are very clear on the action steps operative word is action steps you have to take number three you have an action step based plan a strategy and the steps are just the tactics you implement it in a timely regular scheduled way number four you monitor you pulse you really pay keen attention to your progress and you adjust if it's not what you want and you adjust higher if it's better than you want and number five, you focus on other people's benefit. You don't be self-consumed. You do those five things, the world really is your oyster. You know, you, you find people that are quite comfortable with what's termed uncertainty. The truth is there isn't any uncertainty. There's only the law. And the law decrees that everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. If we build the image in our mind of what we want, and we're true to that image, that'll control the vibration we're in, that controls what we do, and it controls what we attract. Now, the problem is, we let that image get out of the way every now and then, and we're controlled by something outside. And that takes us off track. We've got to correct it and come back on track. But a person that has direction in their life there's no uncertainty. There's only good stuff coming. It's stuff that's going to cause the image in our mind to move into form. And so we wake up every day wondering what part of it's going to show up today and where's it coming from and who's going to deliver it. Every day holds something really good for us. Alfred Adler, the great psychologist, said, I am grateful to the idea that has used me. I love that. Get a big idea and understand that you're going to see it move into form and that's just as certain as the night following the day because that's governed by law too. The laws of correspondence 
for vibration, polarity, and rhythm come into play when you talk about the meaning of life and happiness. We make our happiness dependent on what other people can do for us instead of what we can do for ourselves. You know, the, there's a concept they don't teach you in school. It's called enough. Sometimes what is enough for one person may not be that way for somebody else. And we want more. And when you want more, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Because not always will you get more. Sometimes you do, but it's not all the time. I don't know who told us on this planet that everything is going to go our way. Sometimes things will go your way. Sometimes they won't. We've got to learn to accept this. That's the rhythm and the flow of life. All of life is filled with possibilities. And when you see possibilities, well, it allows you to accept failures as not final. Failures are learning lessons. The American Indians, the Hopi Indians in the Southwest, well, they have a belief. Every day they wake up and pray to the Great Spirit, and they say, Oh, Great Spirit, allow us today, this day, to make 20 mistakes. You see, they believe that by making mistakes, by failing, you actually learn more. You add to this wonderful fountain of wisdom that is called you over a period of time. And if you don't fail, they say, you don't learn anything. So how many times have you failed? I know I have failed a lot. But over the course of the years, I did also knew something that was different. And that was that I was responsible for my own happiness. I knew that there was laughter everywhere. But I also knew that if I wanted to participate, that laughter has to come from inside, not from outside. And that's the nature of spirit. And that's the nature of who you are. And that's the meta secret to everything possible. This is our home. We have nowhere else to go. Earth gives us everything we need to celebrate life. Everything you do will either hurt or heal our planet. brought here to learn many lessons, to learn how to love who you are, where you are, and the people you surround yourself with. Just remember that you carry within yourself everything you need for the fulfillment of your life's purpose. You are the sum of all of your experiences all of your choices and you are a work in progress you deserve more happiness more love more joy more abundance and especially more fun life was never meant to be a struggle you were meant to participate in this grand miracle called life and as you begin to look all around you, start now to taste, smell, hear, and touch with your heart the abundance that surrounds you. You are indeed spectacular beings of light. So if you want to know the meta secret to life, to happiness, live more, love more, and laugh more. Change the stories in your head, and you change the world. It's a short trip. Make it a good one.